There we go. Mike, check. Mike, Mike, check. Was having some technical difficulties. I have no idea where the technical difficulties were coming from. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up. If you can hear me, give me a, I'm good. I'm good. Sound all good. Now, yeah, dog. We in there, dog. We smoking the Alec and Bradley, dog. Hey, <coughs> guys. Hey, thank you guys for coming back, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for the technical difficulties at first. Man, I see my guy Barrett. I see my guy Adam. I see my guy DJ. I see my guy um, Roland. I see my guy Bearded Moon, man. I appreciate all you guys coming back. Coming back. Sorry, guys. So I just got distracted by something on my phone. I just got to respond to. Yes. Be ready at eight. <clears throat> got it so guys we are in here thank you i appreciate you guys man i love you guys appreciate my brothers and sisters of the league for coming back but what's up cigar junkies it's your boy carson also known as ashhead and today on ashhead tv live we will be smoking the alec and bradley ken sugi or ken sugi on ashhead tv today I want to thank you guys. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you guys for coming on and jumping in. And guys, I am through the first third of this cigar. This is the new 2020. This cigar was supposed to have been released earlier. Of course, it was delayed due to the COVID-19, but it is out now and I am through the first third. I'm going to back up because I've been smoking this cigar and wanted to give my review of the first third of this cigar um, prior to the technical difficulties. On the nose of this cigar, it is sweet smelling tobacco and it is pungent. Guys, as soon as you slide this cigar out of the cellophane, you're going to get that well fermented tobacco to just hit your nose, giving you that sweet smell, um, reminding me of like dry dates when it hit my nose. And even on the dry pool, I got that similar dry fruit taste on the dry pool. In the first third of this cigar, I got a sweet like cinnamon breaded note with a sweet tobacco finish real mild retro hell not very peppery not very spicy just hints just hints of pepper that coats the tongue on the back of the throat um you really really have to look for it in order to notice it going into the second third about to have to take off one of the bands, let me see if we can get a good look at that band. It is a beautiful band on that cigar. And can't even get this cigar right now. I'm glad you're doing the review. Hey, thank you, Bearded Moon. Um, um, brick and mortar that's not far from my house. They just happened to have this one. And I was like, hey, that's the new Alec and Bradley. I want to try that one. And I wanted to review it to tell you guys more about it there's another um also heard through the grapevine that there's another um content creator that we all know and love he's going to review this cigar as well and i'm sure mine is kind of on the fly with technical difficulties y'all want to pay attention to his because it'll be more in depth than what my cigar review is um, but guys, so far, so good on this cigar. Guys, we're coming to the close of, a, of uh, another year, close of another year. And boy, has this been an interesting year. But here at the end of the year, guys, growing up as a kid, <clears throat> let me tell you guys, growing up as a kid, give y'all a little, a little background about me because I, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I'm going to try to give y'all 
a little bit of background about me and get into the second third, at least review the second third of this cigar before I have to get off. But giving you guys a little bit of background about me. Growing up as a kid, I grew up um, in the church. And this time of the year was very interesting. I grew up in the church to where um, on we went to Wednesday night Bible study, of course. And on Sunday, you have regular service. And a lot of times you would have like the afternoon program. This is the South, the Bible Belt. So I'm in the South, Alabama, Birmingham. Um, Birmingham, Alabama. So, hey. Y'all, if anybody from the south, y'all know what the south all about. We going to we going to some church. All uh, right, so grew up in the church, and this time of the year, um, you know, we preparing for like the Christmas programs at the church. All the kids got to say their Christmas speeches and all of that type of thing and everything. And this time of the year, as an adult, I'm just reminded of my upbringing. And how close my parents kept us together and how close we were all in the church and everything. And I just went to thinking about, you know, what kind of person it made me today, because I know in life, even for you guys, for me, the going get tough sometimes. Sometimes it gets a little rough out there. Sometimes you want to throw in the towel. But because of my upbringing, I really believe and I really truly believe because of my upbringing and I stayed close to that, it has kept me to the person that I am today. So when challenges come in my life, I don't just give up and I don't just throw in the towel because I know that there's somebody bigger than me that's in charge, that's making everything work out and that's working everything out on my behalf. And all I got to do is just trust in him. So I was thinking about that. And what it made me think about, guys, was we always go, we have like the early morning. If anybody grew up in the church in the South, and it may be some way in other in other states as well, in other regions of the country, but we had um sunrise service. Anybody remember sunrise service? Or did y'all experience sunrise service? Sunrise service is where you get up early in the damn morning. <laughs> That's how I felt as a kid, and that's how I still feel as an adult. You get up early in the morning before the sunrise, and you go to church, and you stay there until the sunrise. We used to do that for Christmas, <laughs> and then we used to do that for, for New Year's. But I'm saying all of this because I'm making a point. I'm making a real good point, guys. I'm making a real good point. With all of that, guys... With all of that, we used to have a segment, and it was called Testimony, where people will stand at the end of the year, and they would give their testimony. And as I got older, it didn't really hit me when I was young, but as I got older, I started to realize what the older people were doing, what the older people were saying, and the, um, and the things that they were going through. Um, and that they would be telling us about, you just sit them right there. Yeah, I'll get them. Um, and the things that they were talking about and what they were saying and the things that they were talking about was during the sunrise, during their testimony segment was about how good God has been to them throughout the year. And Maybe, guys, you've been having a real tough time and you really think that there's nothing that you could possibly um, have to be thankful about. People been dying. We just lost um, um, Tiny um, Lester um, just yesterday and people have been dying. You may have lost family members. Hey, I lost my grandmother this year. I lost um, one of my closest cousins and hunting buddies this year. I lost my uncle this year. I lost my auntie this year. I lost the um, neighbor down the street this year who grew up like a, who grew up as my uncle's best friend, who was like my best friend and another one of my hunting buddies. I'm talking about people have been leaving this earth. So if I had to stand up today and give a testimony for the entire year and how this year has been going, I would say only a few words and that God has kept me. 
God has kept me through all of the trouble and through all of the trials and tribulations. He's kept me through all of the dangers seen and unseen. He's kept me COVID free. He's kept me. I haven't even had a common cold in 2020. Um, I haven't even my I, I usually have very, very severe allergies during the spring and during the fall. None have not minimal effectiveness. So if there's Anything that I can say to give a testimony here at the end of the year, and that is that God has kept me. Guys, this cigar is called the Kintsugi. Kintsugi is basically, it, it means... It means it's two words put together in one. Ken meaning um, gold, and I think that's right. And so it means to be put together. So it's two words being into one. And basically what it is, is actually a art of broken items. And these broken items, mainly pottery, has been put back together with a lacquer or a powder mixture of gold, silver, and or platinum in order to make a great piece of art. Guys, no, I just I, this this cigar is perfect for what I want to talk about today. And I apologize if I'm boring anybody. But um, well, no, I don't. I don't apologize. But um, <clears throat> but um, so I want to say this, though, in light of the name of the cigar, maybe life and the world of what we know, um, the United States, things that are going on with the election, the presidency, all that stuff, maybe it may seem broken and things just may seem to be broken, but guess what? It can all be put back together. Look, there's a song, and I ain't finna sing, <laughs> but it's a song that's usually sung around the same time of the year, and it was written by Kurt Franklin, and the song is Silver and Gold. Come on, somebody, if you know that song, go ahead and sing it for us, Barrett. <laughs> but Silver and Gold, and guys, it's very, very fitting that no matter what's going on in your life, it can all be put back together with silver and gold. And I'm not talking about the physical silver and gold, like the chains and the watches and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about, about just the joy of Jesus Christ and the peace of Jesus Christ. Everything can be put back in place with just that. And whether you believe or whether you don't believe or whether you're struggling to believe or whatever, I'm just here to let you know Guys, that there is a higher power and there's a reason why Adam, Roland, Bearded Moon, Kevin, Andrew, Danny, um, 504, Lefty, and every last one of us. There's a reason that every Danny, my Jewish brother, hey, Jesus was a Jew, baby. Let's go. Uh, there's a reason why every last one of us are still here and still doing good, man. I have not gotten one report from my guys who I hang with in the cigar community. And I consider you guys, my guys that I hang with, that any of you guys have been diagnosed with the COVID. If you have, you kept it to yourself. I haven't got any stories like that, man. So, hey, guys, I know this is what you guys wasn't expected. These were even some things that I wasn't expected to say, but I just wanted to say it on this evening, guys, because I know that we all have been safe this year, and it's not our own doing that we have remained COVID-free. It's not our own doing that we didn't die. It's not our own doing that that our loved ones, our home has been safe. It's not our own doing that we've been able to still go out and afford these cigars and buy these cigars, man. I was just thinking, I was talking to um, Run Real yesterday and we was talking about the amount of money we've spent on cigars. Man, that's a blessing in itself, man, that we have still been able to earn and make a living in the midst of all that's going on because some people have lost their jobs and do not know if they're ever going to have a job again. There's a path and there is a light. 
leaning on that which is beyond our own understanding is a powerful tool for the mind and the soul. I like that, Daddy. Hey, man, I like that. I like that a lot. My cigar about to burn out. I've been talking so long. But, guys, I just wanted to say all of that, ma'am. Um, so y'all can go ahead and pass the collection plate. And um, when somebody can close us out. <laughs> I'm just being silly now. Hey, but, um, guys, I just wanted to go ahead and say that, man, because it's a reason why we all are still here and we all are still blessing, man. I thank God for you guys. And I thank God for blessing you guys and having you guys here. And every Friday when I do a live, you guys always show up on these lives, man. And y'all always participate and we always have a great time, man. Everybody who I've met this year, my channel started about six months ago. Let's get an absolute record of when the channel started. We get an absolute right. I'm going to stop boring y'all after this. I promise I am. We're going to talk about something fun. Uh, my channel started. I did my first video nine months ago. Nine months ago, I did my first video. I am at currently right now. I am at 336 subscribers currently right now. And guys, my channel, I like to think that it has been growing at a fast pace. I'm hoping that I can possibly hit 400, even close to 500 before the year ends. I'm hoping for that. But guys, even if I don't, just being a, a YouTube cigar reviewer is not the end goal. There is a whole lot that I want to do for the cigar community um, and, and the brotherhood here in the cigar community. I have not met anybody who has become an enemy, who have become against me. If somebody dislike me, you know what? I don't even know about it. Just gave the cigar a little purge after that relight. Guys, this is a milder cigar. Um, very mild. Flavor notes, I'm still getting that sweet tobacco on the finish. I'm still getting that creamy breaded quality <clears throat> on the cigar. Pepper picked up a little bit. Pepper on the retro hell, sweet tobacco on the retro hell. A lot of like baked sweet, like pound cake or cookie, cookie qualities that I'm getting on this cigar. This is a very good cigar so far, guys. Very good cigar. A milder smoke. Um, not very, very strong. The strength on this cigar is about medium to mild so far as I come into the second, third. So far, so good. This is a good cigar so far, guys. Hey, but what you guys are smoking? I'm done preaching. What you guys smoking? Guys, I haven't told you, <laughs> told you about the cigar as far as the tobaccos. I've been talking so much. But, guys, this is a Hobano um, wrapper, and the Maduro is the color of this Hobano wrapper. This cigar has a Honduran and Nicaraguan binder as well as Honduran and Nicaraguan fillers. The Hobano wrapper is also Honduran as well on this cigar. And this is a very good blend. And this blend is by Alec and Bradley, which is the sons, not Alec Bradley, which is the father. And he named his company 
after his sons, but this is Alec and Bradley, the two brothers, the sons of the father. I can't remember the father's name. I apologize for that. And we got a very, very large band. Let's see if I, I want you guys. I can't really get a good, you know how the light is reflecting off of the white. So I can't really get a good look at it. How long is this show? Because I just got home. And if you're going to be on for a while, I'm going to light up a smoke. I'm going to be done at about 7.30 to 7.45, Nick. Um, I, I had some technical difficulties. We was having some problems with the sound at first. So we're back now, man. Andrew, stay smoking some of the fire, man. Smoking the Padron 1926 number 90 natural. Come on, Andrew. Big flex. Why are you going to flex us? Then look at my boy K Cam. K Cam came on here with the big flex smoking the Davidoff Grand. Um, Beard and Moon come in with the big flex smoking the Macanudo Esperado White Toro. Um, um, Danny smoking the Nomad. Man, y'all smoking some good cigar. Onyx Reserve Toro for Adam. Hey, look at When I relax, I relax. Hey, I know that's right. Hey, what Lee Mac always say? Life too short to smoke bad cigars. Hey. And this Alec and Bradley is a good one, man. This is a good one. I'm sure y'all like this. Um, just a just a um uh spoiler. Run is going to review this cigar as well. This is a spoiler. So Run is going to review this cigar as well. So check his review out. And I'm sure he's going to go more in depth. I'm kind of, you know, fast with it. So I apologize because I'm fast with it. And the live, because of the live, you know, guys don't get to see the entire smoke or the entire review because because of time. I was usually fired up and been in smoke through the first third by the time we go live just to make up for time so that I can at least get through the entire second third and a portion of the final third. But this cigar is burning kind of slow. It's a slow smoke. I fired this cigar up at um, I fired the cigar up right at about 630. So it's 720 now. So and I still got second third first and final third on this cigar left this was a six by 52 ring gauge toro it did it did go out on me and i've been talking a lot so that's another reason for you know it being a slower smoke as well We're rolling smoking. I miss rolling smoke. We're rolling smoke. Y'all smoking heat. Tonight got the LFD. Hey, you know I like them LFDs. Guys, Um, on the 20th, that's a Sunday, I'm going to go live on the 20th and make my, I got a big announcement we're going to make, and I'm also going to do my top five most memorable cigars I smoked in 2020. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give one away. I'm going to give one away. One of the cigars that I'm going to talk about, or I'm going to mention in that top five is the LFD 25th anniversary. It's our anniversary. Hey, that was a good, good cigar. That was a good one. So that's going to be one of them, but I'm not going to give the other four away in addition to an honorable mention. I had to, I had to order me another one of the honorable mention because all the ones I had, I smoked up. 
So I had to order me another one. So I hope it be here by next Sunday because next Sunday will be the 20th. Um, also, um, ugly sweater, um, op opulence premium cigars having their ugly sweater on the 20th as well. They're going to have their ugly sweater on the 20th. Ugly sweater Zoom party on the 20th. I don't have any ugly sweaters. So what I might do is just make me an ugly sweater. That's what I might do. I might. I, I am. There's no might to it. I am going to make me an ugly sweater. And you know what? I got the perfect ugly sweater that I'm going to wear. The perfect one. I just thought about what I'm going to wear. It's going to be a surprise. So if y'all get a chance, go um, follow Opalence Premium Cigars on IG so that y'all can be in the ugly sweater. It's some more um, like Zooms that's coming up this week. Um, soon that's coming up. The, some ugly sweater ones and some other ones. I don't remember all of them. Every time I see them, I try to screenshot them so they can be in my phone and try to put it on my calendar so I can get the reminder of it. So I got to finish setting all that up so that I won't miss anybody's ugly sweater Zoom party. I'm pulling out my phone because I am about to. Let me see. I'm about to look and see which ones. Um. We got opulence. We got we got opulence. That's on the twentieth at seven p.m. Central Standard Time, and we got um, sex and the cigar, ugly sweater, Christmas party. Hers is um, hers is on the seventeenth at seven p.m. Central Standard Time. 8 p.m. Eastern. That's the that's Thursday on the 17th. Let me see if y'all can see that. Y'all cannot see that. So I apologize that y'all can't see that. I want to show it to you guys, but we're getting some crazy light reflection on there. All right. As you said, the 20th, your top five. And I'll, yeah, my top five is going to be on the 20th. Um, I'll announce what time it's going to be. It's probably going to be early since that's a Sunday. It's probably going to be early. Um, most of the churches are closed, so nobody will be at church. So it's probably going to be afternoon. But usually on Sunday, Lee Mac usually have two premieres in the afternoon. So we're going to try to focus it around that. I'm going to try to squeeze it in there. We're going to try to squeeze it in there somehow. Um, but it's going to be on the 20th, though. It's going to be on the 20th at some time. At some time. Let me see what I missed, man, in the comments. You never know what day is going to be your last, so I don't usually wait to smoke the good stuff. Hey, say that, Adam. You never know what day is going to be your last, so go ahead and smoke the good stuff. Hey, I don't save nothing. I don't save no cigars, man. Um, the only cigars that I that only two cigars that I probably got in my humidor that I've held on to is um LFD Andalusian Bull. I've held on to them, but these newer Andalusian bulls that I've gotten, I held on to them for a reason because I wanted to see will they get better with age. Because the newer ones that I'm getting don't taste as good as what I used to smoke back in like 2015, 2016, 17, 18, all that stuff. So 2020, they haven't been quite the same. So I just wanted to sit on them for a while and see if they get better by aging or if they would age in the humidor. I've even, you know, heard people say that, you know, once you get cigars, um, they don't age anymore. But I have had cigars that sit for a while and some of the flavor notes and strength has went away. So they do change a little bit if they as they sit. Um, and the other one is the um, Agonosa Leaf Supreme Leaf. Those are really the only two cigars that I have set on for a while um, that are good cigars that I set on. But I still smoke them. So it's not like I'm saving them and not smoking them. I'm still smoking those cigars. So I've been smoking. Um, I've been smoking all the good stuff, no matter what the price. 
no matter how good um, some people have like special sticks that they sit aside for special occasions. If I need a cigar for a special occasion, I'll just run to the brick and mortar and pick up something for a special occasion. And most time that's going to be like a placentia um, or a Padron that I'll pick up for a special occasion. Um, cigars like that, placentias and Padron, Padrons, they don't sit very long in my humidor because I smoke just like that. I'm smoking them right away. When I get my Black Line Luxury Cigar of the Month Club box, which hasn't hit yet. Mine has still hasn't came yet. But once I get it, I'm probably going to smoke all four of them babies in the same day. I'm if it hits, today is Friday. So I was hoping it was going to hit today because that was all I was going to smoke this weekend was those cigars. But they haven't hit. So hopefully they'll hit tomorrow. If not, they'll hit Monday. Whenever they hit, I'm going to smoke every last one of them in one day. Just know that. And I'm saying that to say because they box just be loaded with the good stuff. I'm talking about they box be see see what see what um Nicholas Daniel said. They definitely age. I know they age, man. I know I've heard people saying that you know, once the cigar has been rolled and went through its own aging process, it doesn't age anymore. But you gotta think this is a it's a leaf. And just think of how a leaf falls from a tree and that leaf just keeps getting older and older and older at once it hits the ground until it just, you know, disintegrates and just goes away. So. So um, they're definitely going to aid some. For example, ah, I give a good example. I'll give a good, good, good example. Good example. Um, the warp. Uh, Maestro Del Tiempo, that cigar right there. Um, I got that cigar in, I think it was in the, the Lancero or it may have been the Double Corona or Lancero. James just jumped in, so he'll know the size of that one that was in the Black Line Luxury Box. That cigar, when I got it, it had a lot of age on it, and I knew it had a lot of age on it because the cellophane was so dark. I've even heard some people say that just because the cellophane, cellophane, cellophane is dark on the cigar, that doesn't always mean that that comes from age. I took that to be as a lie because I've been smoking cigars long enough. I may not know everything about cigars, but I do know if I get some old dingy ass cellophane, that means that cigar probably got a little age on it. And then I end up getting like a five pack of those from James or Black Line Luxury. And every last one of those, baby, you can just taste it. You can just taste it. So, guys, listen, I'm going to tell you all this. I was talking about this on my live. I was on IG live earlier and I was talking about and what's up, James. And what's up to everybody that just came in? Um, I am smoking the Alec and Bradley. Kensugi. And um, and it, it has been a very, very good cigar thus far. That's the review. <laughs> hey, but um, I was talking about this, man. It'd be a lot of people putting out a lot of trash, and I ain't here to try to bash nobody. I'm just saying, guys, the inf we can get information. All we got to do is Google the information about these cigars. Um. Uh, that person doesn't know anything. Cello is always the first indicator. Exactly. See, James is an expert, man. I know. I know James know, man. Um, and and um, and then, man, that just made me get another thought. Okay, uh, it's a brick and mortar that I go to, and this is the only brick and mortar in town that has the LFD cabinet number five. So, and you know, and anybody who know the cabinet number fives don't have cellophane on them. So I went in and I usually just stick my hand in the box and just grab a handful and however many I can hold, that's how many I'll buy. I just really like that cigar a lot. That's really a favorite of mine. So I'm going to get some of them. Then when I look at them, I notice by the time I got to the register, I noticed one of them has a mole on it and he's going to tell me it's plumed. 
I'm like, dude, I know plume. I know the difference from plume and mold. Plume is not going to be in just one spot on a cigar. Plume is going to be all over the cigar. Plume is just the oils and the sweetness that comes out of the fermented tobacco and it coats the entire of the tobacco and it crystallizes and it gives a like a crystal like dusty like sheen all over the entire cigar. It's not going to be little like fuzzy white spots, which is mold. I know the difference. So I was saying all that to say this, that a lot of times there's going to be a lot of people that get on the internet and on the cigar reviews and they feed you a lot of trash and they just say anything and they'll just say stuff and this stuff is not true. It's not true. They just want to try to sound smart and try to sound like they know everything that they talking about that Caldwell has two to three years old to it. Press the button. Cigar almost fired, went out again. But I'm going to have to do a relight on this guy. Again, guys, y'all got me talking too much, man. I can't even enjoy my cigar, man. What y'all talking about tonight? <laughs> but guys, a lot of them they'll get on there and they just try to, they just be trying to sound smart and be trying to sound like they don't know what they're talking about. And they always be trying to like debunk or or discredit other stuff and other people, man. Like for example, like for example, I seen two videos where somebody was saying. Don't store your cigars in the acrylic jars or the mason jars. Look, my first humidor, my first humidor was a mason jar. And guys, my best humidor, I got my mason jar humidor. I got um, a Tupperdor, door. That's the plastic storage container. Um, and I got um, just a regular wooden um, desktop humidor with the glass top. And I got a cedar chest, like what grandma used to have at her bed that I made into a humidor, right? And the one that keeps my cigars the best is my mason jar humidor. I'll show it to you. That bitch full too. Hold on. Sorry, guys, I'm back. But here we go. Look at that. Let me show y'all. This video has turned into a um, humidor tour. It's turned into a humidor tour. I mean, I ain't been on but 30 minutes, so I, I got a little bit more time. I got a little bit more time. Turn into a humidor tour. This has kept my cigars better than any humidor I got in the house. Better than any one of them. Matter of fact, today I took some cigars out of my cedar chest because I took cigars out of that and put in the other humidors today because it was... The cedar, let me tell y'all guys about the big cedar chest. The cedar chest, it soaks up all of the humidity. I mean, even, uh, even like the humidification packs I put in, it dried them babies up in a week. And it was soaking them up. And I smoked a um, cigar, the Lugiane Privy. I smoked one yesterday, smoked one today out of there. And it was burning like crap, all flaky and everything. And I said, you know what? It's that chest. That chest is sucking out all the life out of my cigars. So, and now when I initially built it, put it together, I did the seasoning. I went through the seasoning process and it was doing good. But right up into the house, now we're in the wintertime, the heater is going, and we got some temperature changes in the house and everything. So I feel like that's affecting it. So I just got to go tweak it a little bit and get everything back right and everything and get back right. Um, always trust your palate. You will know 
if it's plume or mold. That's right, James. You'll know if it's plume or mold. I'm trying to make sure I get everybody, read everybody comments and everything. I have used Tupperdoors. Hey, my Tupperdoor does very good as well. I haven't had any problems with the Tupperdoor. So when guys be getting up on here saying this stuff don't work, man, you don't, I'm saying this, you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money on all these crazy human doors unless you just want the stuff. You feel what I'm saying? Now, me personally, I want some nice big human doors. Eventually, I will get them but i'd rather spend most of my money on these sticks versus spending all my money on dang on humidors and this thing right here was my first humidor this was the first humidor i had and this thing works fire hey i get stickers and i just throw my stickers on it um i had ordered some beard bomb from um kevin with cigar prop that's a sticker from that um let me see. There goes Cigar Prop. That's a sticker from another club that I used to be a part of. Um, that's another Cigar Prop sticker. Another one. I used to, um, this, um, I don't know where I got the Cigar Pulpit, but they got a podcast. And then I got the Run Real sticker on this. All my other stickers on the back of my computer that I'm shooting live from. And guys, I got, <coughs> I got, this thing fits. Look at that. Look at all them cigars. Man. Look at all those cigars. Man. I got, let me see what all I got in here. I'm just going to pull out a few. I got that baby. I got a few of those in there. Um, I got some Holy Lance Luciane. I got, I have no clue why this cigar is out of the cellophane. I think I may have been finna smoke it one day. Got some of those in there. Um, got some shorter cigars in here too. I don't know what these are. Um, this is a single air Lugiane CL. Oh, this is the Phantom. This is a Phantom. I smoked the Phantom in another size yesterday. That mug was off the chain. Um, let me see. I didn't even know I had no more of those Phantoms. <laughs> Surprise. Um, that came from um, Black Line Luxuries, the sampler pack. Um, what else in here? There's a lot of stuff in here. That just to show you guys just, just how much stuff stickers are the second best part of ordering cigars it is man. i love getting the stickers off i like getting the stickers too danny 300 count wood 50 desks five rubbers all work great work great man man these guys be getting up here talking about this stuff don't work man they just be just trying to sell they stuff that man don't be believing that trash man look man listen to me listen to me I ain't going to feed y'all no bull, man. I ain't going to feed y'all. I just cracked the wrapper on that, I know. Um, that's a Mwanza. I was telling y'all about that. I had another Mwanza from uh, Opulence Cigar. Um, what else I got in here? I got oh, a Mark Twain. I got a review coming um, of this cigar. Probably come next week. And I got some more stuff down here that I can't quite get to with my fingers. But this was my first humidor. And this humidor here, I made it. All I do, I keep a, in the bottom of it, I got a humidification pack. And I had one on top, but it slid down. And I usually just keep a 69 humidification pack two of them sometimes i just keep one but because i got a lot of cigars in here now i got two humidification packs in it and it keeps my cigars better than any any humidor i got this one does the best so if someone tells you that acrylic or or, or glass or whatever this is doesn't work they are lying i am a testimony i am giving you a testimony that they work i feel good i made it to 
your first humidor. <laughs> hey, let's go, baby. Hey, Opulence is in my first ever humidor. And this right here, this is um, this is just a little humidor, travel humidor that I use. This was a gift that was given to me. And I always leave the house with cigars and I use this. I use this also for dry boxing. I got a um a low 62 humidification pack in it. This 62 humidification pack is mostly sold. Both of the sell this one mainly. If you go on their website, this one is mostly sold and catered to um cannabis. But I can't ever find the bigger 62s. I can only find these smaller 62s. And actually, this one was inside a package. Hey, y'all, that's my phone. That's my son. This is the second time my son had called on the live. What up, son? Oh. What's up? Uh, yeah, I'm on the live. What you doing? You're drinking your protein powder? Okay, you like it? Yeah, it filled you up. Filled you up. Good, good. Remember, man, get your calories. You're an athlete. You got to have them calories, and you got to have protein. Check this out. How much you weigh? 230. I'm at 253. You don't weigh no 253 pounds, Negro. I weigh, I weigh 230 pounds. What the hell? Huh? One okay, 156. 156. You need a gram of protein per every pound because you're an athlete. The protein helps your body recover. You got me? Mm -hmm. It helps your body recover a lot faster. And because you're an athlete, I would even say double the amount of grams. Now, it's good that you use a plant-based protein powder, but don't forget to eat your chicken, to eat your steak, because there are certain amino acids you're going to get from that chicken and from that steak that you're not going to get in the plant in the plant base. And you need them amino acids so that your body can recover a lot faster. You're running every Saturday and every Wednesday, so you only get two days of rest time. You got me? So get your food. I'm finna get off and get back to my live, all right? All right. I'll call you in a minute. All right. Love you, son. Peace. Peace. All right. Guys, I'm back. But I was talking about the, um, tell them to put the tuna and peanut butter steak with that. Hey, the tuna, peanut butter, and steak. Hey, I tell him what I do. Hey, look. So I used to bodybuild and, and, Body bodybuilding is expensive as heck, guys. I just used to have a grocery list of supplements that was about two to three hundred dollars a month. So food, I couldn't buy as much food because I was buying all the supplements. So I would get like tons of the can canned tuna. I would get tons of the canned tuna in spring water, tons of that. And I just make a big tuna salad. That tuna salad usually will last me about two days. And I used to get a lot of protein from the tuna salad, put a lot of eggs in them. And it was just mainly just eggs and canned tuna for me so that I can get the amount of protein I need so I can get the amount of calories that I need as well. Uh, but that's on a whole nother channel. That's on a whole nother channel, guys. Let's get back to these cigars. What was I talking about? I was talking about my little humidor. I'm a little travel humidor. I usually use this to hot box. So if I got a cigar and, it's, and it seems like it's very moist and it's got a lot of humidity to it, <clears throat> I'll stick it in there for about an hour and it'll be perfect after that. It'll be perfect after I stick it in there for about an hour. And, um, I'll usually, um, what else I'll do? I'll stick it in there for about an hour and do that. And, um, and anytime I leave the house, I always take cigars with me and I always stick them in that when I take them with me, when I go buy cigars, if I'm buying just a few singles, 
um, I'll stick them in there. It'll hold up to six cigars. If I'm not going like big ring gauges, like 60 or 70 ring gauges, if I'm just sticking around like the 50 um, ring gauges, then it'll, it'll work good. It'll work good. Six meals a day. That's what I'm talking about, Roland. Used to eat, Roland. Used to eat. Used to wake up in the morning and have a breakfast of at least about six eggs. And then I'll turn around a few minutes later and for a snack, I'll usually go with either some more eggs or some tuna salad. Then lunch, I'll go with some more um, heavy protein meal. And then in between there, I usually have a snack of like some nuts or some rolling. And then after that, for dinner, I usually have another big, huge meal. And then if I didn't want to consume any food, I'll just make a big protein shake. And then I'll grind up all of my supplements in the protein shake and drink them if I got tired of smoking pills. Because um, the supplements, I was popping about, shoots, I was talking about 20 20 different pills a day and I used to get as many I can fit in my hand and just throw them down and just drink down all the pills or whatever um, <clears throat> from anything, fish oils, everything, guy, everything. When I was bodybuilding, the most I weighed was about 255 pounds. And when I was 255 pounds, I was the leanest I had ever been. I'll post a picture up one day of how big I was and how lean I was at 250. I used to be a massive human being. Concrete, sidewalk, cracking, big. Hey, you did like, who is this big joker right here coming to eat my children? Get him out of here. <coughs> but I don't bodybuild anymore. I do train. Um, I just mostly train mostly obese people who may have some health conditions and looking to lose weight. Kind of specialize in that, just helping like people who um, I got since COVID, I only got one client now, and that's my sister. She's always faithful and always very supportive. So the COVID kind of killed some of my clients as far as training. As far as training, I got one client um, named Courtney. He was 530 pounds. Today, he is 300 pounds. <clears throat> He's probably right at 300 now. So, you know, with my help, he lost all that. But, hey, we're talking about these cigars, guys. My cigar went out twice, and I had to relight it twice. But, guys, this Alec and Bradley Kinsugi, it has been an excellent smoke. This cigar has the first third of this cigar, just to give you guys just a little rundown of the first third of cigar. Um, that um, that initially I got that creaminess, that breaded note, that was some cinnamon on this cigar um, in the beginning. It kind of reminded me of like a baked cookie or like um, sweet bread, I guess like a pound cake or Something like that. I did get a little ginger on it as well with some very, very hints of spice. If you guys retrohale, this is a good cigar to retrohale with because the retrohale is just full of that sweet tobacco and it has a sweet tobacco finish. I have to be careful a lot of times. Because sometimes the finish on these cigars are so good till, you know, you be having cigar breath and you don't know you have cigar breath and you be talking in people's face. But the finish be so good. So I just want that taste to just stay in my mouth because I like how it tastes a lot. I was the chubby kid in class my whole life. T-shirts in the pool um, vibes. But pandemic got me kicked into gear because I didn't want to catch it. And I did. Don't want to be able to fight it. Um, drop 45 pounds. Hey, that's awesome, Danny. Man, that is awesome. Um, I try to still keep in shape pretty good, even though I don't do bodybuilding, try to go to the gym every day. I have been slacking. I'll be honest. I have been slacking. At the first of the year, at the beginning of the year, um, I had toyed with 
getting back into bodybuilding and was getting in really, really good bodybuilding shape. And then the gyms closed down on me. And so it caused me to kind of be a slacker. Uh, even though I got some equipment at home, I was still being a slacker as well. So I picked up a few unwanted pounds around the waist and everything. But, you know, your brother's still looking good now. You know what I'm saying? You know, I still, I still stay ready, you know. Because when the sun's out, the guns are out. Yeah. Just want to say that. But, um, guys. I wish I had time to smoke this cigar down to the nub. I just want to tell you, I do believe even at this point with an entire third and a half of this cigar left, that this cigar is going to be nub worthy. Guys, if you can get your hand on this cigar, I don't know if James is still in the chat. James, if you are still in the chat, can we come to you and get this cigar? If we can come to you and get this cigar, because Bearded Moon said that he can't get this cigar in his city. If we can go to James and get this cigar, hit up Black Lion Luxuries and go bug him and see if he can get this cigar. This is definitely a cigar that you should smoke. I'm recommending it. And this cigar is nub worthy. I'm going to continue to nub this cigar out. I got to get ready and go because I got to, you guys know, one of my second, third other jobs. I be doing so much is a bouncer at a hookah bar. So I got to go do my bouncer thing. Make sure, you know, nobody ain't trying to, you know, do some pat downs, do a little crowd control. Anybody drank a little bit too much. Got to make sure hey, you got to get up out of here, player, because you can't ruin the fun tonight. There's some people in here trying to have some fun. So I got to go through my thing. I don't know if John Shadow is still in here, but if so, John, I'm rocking the chucks tonight. The all white joints tonight. Um, hey, that's all I got for you guys. Ashhead out.